My favorite plugins of 2022 for mixing and mastering, coming up. Hi, welcome to the Crates Motel. My name's Conan. In today's video, we're going to be looking at my favorite plugins for mixing and mastering that came out in 2022. It's obviously a completely subjective list. They're my favorite plugins. I'm not by any means saying they're the best plugins that ever existed. It was quite difficult to narrow it down, to be honest, but what I did in the end was I basically picked the five plugins that I tend to use in almost every mix or master that have come out this year. And, uh, and 2022 has been a good year for me. It's been probably my most busiest and productive year to date. Uh, for mastering for clients and for mixing for clients and also as an artist and in production as well. So yeah, 2022 has been a good year for me and I'm really looking forward to 2023. So let's jump in. So here we are in Studio One. Now I just want to point out quickly that this is not going to be a full review of these plugins. I'm literally going to go over the plugin in a couple of minutes, just show you how I use it, uh, give you an idea of how it sounds, what you can use it for, that kind of thing. And, uh, and that's it really, it's not going to be massively in detail. I have done in detail reviews on a few of the plugins included. The first one, SPLPQ, I have actually done a video on that. Um, and that's it really, it's just going to be very, very quick and just a quick explanation of why they're my favourite. So kicking off with SPL's PQ Mastering Equaliser, obviously based on SPL's PQ hardware, it's a piece of hardware which I have used and since it came out, uh, I have pretty much used it on almost every master, I would say. It, it's my go-to EQ for mastering. Um, it tends to be in my chain right from the very start. And it, it's it's just a great plugin. It's, it's very, very subtle, very broad stroke, although you can be very surgical with it, although I tend to use it for broad stroke. Uh, it's got all the additional things that Brainworks add on, like the mono maker, stereo width, uh, the filters, etc., that kind of thing. Really, really nice plugin. And uh, yeah, like I say, I use it a lot on masters. Uh, the low end is really, really nice, very, very rounded. Let's just, just have a quick listen. Uh, this is a master that I worked on for a client called Steve Darley. Really nice track, very nice kind of ambient kind of house track. Uh, very, very talented artist, and I do a lot of work for him. So you can hear straight away, really, really nice low end on this. So a quick demonstration there, really, really nice EQ, very, very subtle. The low end, the 5K, I mean, it, it really is a go-to for me. Um, they do a whole bunch of really nice EQs, uh, Plugin Alliance at the moment. A lot of mastering EQs have come out this year, and it has been difficult for me to decide which has probably been my favourite. This one just about pips it for me, but there's, they, they, like I said, there's been a few, Soma, Amec, um, and also other companies have released some really nice EQs this year, but I wanted to include a mastering EQ because obviously as a mastering engineer, it's something that I use a lot. And especially for mastering, um, I do absolutely love the PQ. So on to the next one is the Magma BB Tubes from Waves. Um, now, I honestly, pers I think that this is going to end up being a real classic plugin. You know, over the years, Waves have released a bunch of plugins that have become classics. Um, some of them, 20 years plus now, I still actually use. Waves L2, I still use that a lot. I absolutely love it. Um, their Renaissance uh, stuff is obviously really, really good and real classic. It, it, it's, it's just, this year has been a big year for saturation plugins, I think. 
And I think part of the reason for that is that the uh, oversampling has just gone to insane levels. And obviously oversampling with harmonic and saturation plugins is a big help in getting them to sound closer to the analog pieces of hardware, which we're trying to emulate all the time with these kind of plugins. Um, and, and like I said, this year has been a really, really good year for saturation plugins. This particular one is just so simple and just sounds so good. I mean, it, it really is, you know, sometimes I love reading manuals when it comes to plugins. It's one of the first things I do. Sometimes I read the manual before I even touch the plugin or before I even load the plugin. And but I do also like plugins where you can just load it up and just feel your way through it. You know, there's, you don't you don't really need to read the manual to get a feel for this plugin at all. Very simple, very straightforward and just sounds really great. So I'm just going to play the same track th uh, that I just played a second ago, the house track by Steve Darley, and just, you know, add some add some saturation, just add some growl to it and just give you an idea of what you can do with a master or on the mix bus with a plugin like this, uh, rather than using it on drums and bass and all that kind of stuff, which it is absolutely brilliant for, but there's a ton of videos online showing that. So as a mastering engineer, I was just gonna show really how I might use it uh, on a master. And obviously I'm gonna push it a little bit further than I normally would as well. Um, and I'll try and get the levels right so it's not fooling you with louder is better. You hear the, the the depth and kind of 3D volume it gives to the low end um, without kind of not boosting it in the same way that an EQ would. And um, it's really nice for that. I, I only tend to use it very subtly. It's not something I really use on a master where I'm going to obviously drive it into distortion uh, because that's not the kind of thing you want on most masters. There are some people who want masters like that. So, you know, I might do something kind of like this where it's just kind of beefing up the low end and just giving it a little bit of a growl and a bit of chunkiness uh, and some volume and then just dial back the, the mix knob. <laughs> Moving on to number three in the list, this plugin absolutely blew my mind. Along with saturation, this year clipping has been a really, really big thing. I think last year it, it, it kind of rose. There were a lot of good clipping plugins coming out. There was already a good few clipping plugins out, but this year nearly every major company has put out a clipping plugin as such. And Acoustic Audio have put out a couple of plugins where you can clip and I've always had two or three clipping plugins that I've always gone to that get close to how the, to the sounds I used to get by, you know, clipping converters uh, when I was outside the box using analog equipment. What they've done with Ash is they've captured the sound of a bunch of really high end mastering converters. And I mean, it, it, it's just it's it's just really really good. I I I love acoustic or audio. I have to be honest um, that they frequently release really really good plugins. Quite hungry in the old CPU, although they have got much much better at it this year. And this one, it, it doesn't really hit the CPU hard. But having a list of high end mastering converters to clip Lavery's prisms. You know, I mean, I can't remember exactly what all of these are. I know I have a couple that are my favorite. 
it just it just really is just really really good uh but I, you know, i'm going to stop rabbiting on now and i'm going to play some music through it. i'm going to use that master again uh, i'm going to push it hard it, now remember you know it, it's it's not really going to be one of those plugins necessarily that is a, a real night and day difference um that's not the point of it um but it does enable you to really get some level on your masters uh, really push the RMS level. I tend to go for RMS levels rather than uh, LUFS, to be honest with you. And this particular plugin is really, really good for that. Uh, if you want to see a, a master at work when it comes to things like this, uh, look up Luca Pretolesi if you don't already know about him. He is totally inspirational to a lot of mastering engineers and mixing engineers. And he really, really gets how to use clippers in the box and out the box. So um, I don't know if he's done a review on this on this particular plugin or not, but I can guarantee he almost definitely uses it because he does do a lot of stuff for Acoustica. So let's have a listen. So we have soft and hard clip here, so I'll probably go more towards the hard clip. Obviously it has an auto gain here as well, so you don't notice, uh, you don't get that jump in volume. It can have uh, LUFS on here. I mean, I'm really pushing that there uh, and I could push the input a lot more. It, it's you know, without going into too much detail, and I probably will do a video on this, um, it, you know, you, you, you have to dig in deep. It's a simple plugin. It gets you to where you want to get to very quickly, but there's a lot to it. And to get the absolute best out of it, you really need to experiment with different sources. But it's amazing. Honestly, I mean, it, it, I, I know Acoustica plugins are not cheap. And I know that if you're running uh, an older laptop or an older desktop, they can be a bit expensive on the CPU. But if you if you want to take mastering in the box seriously and mixing in the box seriously as well, then definitely look at a decent clipper. And uh, you can't really go wrong with Ash, to be honest. I mean, it's, I, I, you know, I'm still working my way through these, trying to find out, you know, trying to get which of my favorite for particular situations. Uh, particular sources, whether it's house music, whether it's, well, I don't clip in jazz music very often, but, you know, for multiple different sources, you would have multiple dis different reasons to clip. And, you know, all these emulations that they've captured here um, are going to be good for different situations. I know Platinum Maker is really nice. Uh, there is actually an alternative uh, GUI as well. I just prefer this GUI personally. Um, but like I said, the, the oversampling is insane. Uh, obviously quite expensive if you go up to 1024 um, I don't tend to do that I can't say enough I can't give enough plaudits about this plugin it, it truly is marvelous exquisite amazing and uh, if you've got you know if you're serious and you've got the money wait for a sale by all means you know um, and I'm and I'm hoping fingers crossed that they might extend the amount of um, converters that they that they've uh, captured and emulated or captured rather uh, with the software that they use um, that would be great if they could add some of those because they do that with their reverb plugins and their headphone plugins that kind of thing so the next plugin number four on my list of favorite plugins of 2022 another plugin from plugin alliance and brainworks they've really been on form this year uh, there's been a lot of changes uh, with them as well, um, joining up with Native Instruments, Isotope, etc. And um, they've just been putting out just really, really good plugins, plugins that I use on a daily basis. And obviously, we're all familiar with this guy, and he has, you know, given them the license and worked with them on this plugin. And again, it's another one of those plugins where you can read the manual, but it's really better to just get stuck in and start twiddling knobs. Um, and again, it's, a, it's, it's just 
just a really, really good plug-in. It just sounds really nice. It's got all the classic things which Brainworks had on. Again, the Monomaker stereo width, etc. But you know what? I just barely touch these. I just get stuck in with the temp, the cook, the burners. And, and it just, I mean, for mastering, I personally, I don't tend to use it in mixing very often, but you can, of course, use it in mixing. I just tend to use it in mastering, occasionally on the mix bus. But let's just get stuck in. And uh, this is a master that I did for a guy called Lip, really talented producer, and the track Sensory Overload. Hear how it instantly just opens the mix up. It's it's you kind of you know as a mastering engineer, I like to think that my ears are well trained and I can hear tonal differences. I can hear you know reverbs. I can hear what EQ is doing. I can hear what compression is doing. I can visualize it in my head and I can get get a compressor to do what I want it to do by how I visualized it or how I've heard it inside my head. This plugin which is one of the reasons why I kind of like it, it's just voodoo. I, you know, I, I can't, I don't always really know what's going on, but I know that, you know, if I just push this here and, or if I just move this up or I just turn that one there, or I take this up a little bit, or I drop that down a little bit, I, I, I know what it's going to do, but I don't really know what it does, if that makes sense. Uh, and, and I love plugins like that. And it's fun. It's a fun plugin. And, uh, it's you know making music and, and mixing music and mastering music etc it should be enjoyable it should be fun and because most of us um, I would say most of us a majority of us don't have the hands-on analog studios um, and it's all in the box and it's all playing around with mouse and stuff like that it's nice when you find a plug-in that you can hover the mouse over use your scroll wheel or, or just move it with the mouse and it brings a smile to your face when you and you add something or you take something away. And uh, the oven is definitely one of those plugins for me. It's definitely a plugin where I use Parallel Mix a lot. I like to dial in, I like to get the flavor that I'm trying to get, and then I just blend it using the Parallel Mix. So this is probably the most used knob uh, on the plugin for me, to be honest. Finally, we're going to look at something AI and 2022 has been a big, big year for AI. And this has caused a lot of criticism, certainly a lot of chat on the forums. And, you know, obviously I've seen people freaking out saying, oh, AI is going to take over our jobs, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then you've then I've seen the other side of the coin. People have said AI is a really, really great idea. It helps people who don't necessarily understand what they're doing, maybe come out with better results. Some people would call that cheating. Some people would call that amazing. You know, it, it's basically what I'm saying is there's been very mixed reactions to the advent of AI in music and, and it's going to carry on and there's going to be more of it and it's going to get better. But Myself personally, and this is just my personal opinion, I, you know, obviously I have a job to do and it's taken me many, many years to be able to do that job. And, you know, I could look at AI and think, oh, you're going to steal my work, etc., that kind of thing. But I, I'm always, I always try to be really, really positive about things like this. I see AI as, first off, a really, really good teaching tool. And secondly, it gives me a second, third, fourth, fifth set of ears in the studio when I'm on my own. Um, it gives me another, you know, I, I know it's AI and I know it's a robot as such. And I kind of like that. kind of like the idea of me having several robots in the studio and I'll run a track through them and they'll go, oh, well, I think maybe you should do this or do that. And I'll listen back to it and, wow, that sounds really good. Or, oh, no, I don't agree with you. Sorry. 
Uh, I'm not saying I sit here and talk to robots, um, although maybe I do. Who knows? You'll never know. But I, I don't see it as a negative thing at all. I, I think that the AI is going to get better and that can only be positive for the music business in terms of uh, teaching people, in terms of um, using it as a tool. And the reason why I wanted to bring up Smart Comp 2 is because compression is one of those tools that we use every single day in the studio, but it's probably the easiest to misunderstand, the easiest to get wrong, and the easiest to completely mess up a mix or a source or a sound. Uh, so having a tool which I can use with, with my students that I'll teach online, where I can show them visually exactly what a compressor does. And uh, yeah, and that's 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 what I've used AI for, I guess, is, is what is the point I'm trying to make. And Smart Comp is really good for that. Sonable do a bunch of smart uh, plugins, smart EQ. The Smart Limiter is really, really good. Um, you know, it, it's had me second guessing myself sometimes. And I will say, on a few occasions, I've used Smart Comp and I feel like I've got a drum bus dialed in 1176 or, you know, LA2A or ssl g bus got it dialed in i know exactly what i'm doing oh yeah do this so all sounds good yeah sounds great let's just have a listen what smart comp 2 thinks and I, and that's what i use it for so i drop in smart comp 2 i, I, I sh basically you you can analyze your signal here you have a bunch of uh, I, they're not really presets but i guess it, it sets the compressor up in such a way that it will analyze it, it will analyze better if you if you're doing drums to set it to drum bus Uni uh, electric bass, universal, etc. Universal, I, I tend to use the most, even if it is just a drum. Um, and it analyzes the incoming uh, source and it gives you an idea of what what it thinks you should, comp how you should compress it, what ratio, what attack, what release, that kind of thing. And sometimes it's had a better result than my own ears. I don't have a problem with that. I don't have an ego when it comes to things like that. Um, I'm always learning every single day and even after over 30 years in the studio I learn something new every single day and AI programs like Smart Comp 2 and their Smart Limiter and the, the ream of other AI uh, plugins we've had this year have opened my eyes to certain things and have taught me certain things and I don't think that's a negative thing I don't feel negatively about them I don't see them as a threat um, and I've probably gone on a little bit too long about Smart Comp 2 now, and I haven't even shown you what it does. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a, I'm gonna run a master through it. It's not something I would normally do. I tend to use this compressor on sources, instruments, buses. Um, but let's, let's just run a track through it. And I'll show you what it can do, and it'll give you, you know, an idea, and I'll, and I'll show you how I use it as a teaching tool, and why I think it's a really invaluable plugin, and why it's made my favorites of 2022. First off, when you play the signal through it, obviously you get a readout here. There's no compression on there at all at the moment, but I can compress by using the threshold, changing the ratio, and here you can change the attack and release as well. You can either do it like this, or you can drag it, uh, drag on it up and down with the mouse, etc. So great visual tool. Um, for students to show them exactly what's going on. And what, what's great most of all for a, as a teaching tool is once you actually start compressing, it will show you what's being compressed and how it's being compressed. So it gives you a visual tool. It gives you a before and after on this gray down here and at the top it gives you it's showing you what's compressing and you can see what kind of effect different attack has on it what kind of effect different release has on it now there's a lot more to this compressor but i just wanted to i really wanted to include it i really wanted to include an ai plugin because ai has been such a big thing in 2022 and i absolutely know 100 percent it's going to be even bigger over the coming years and i suppose i wanted to give my opinion on it it's just my opinion, no right or wrong here, but 
perhaps it would inspire you to, if you do feel slightly threatened by AI or a little bit overwhelmed by it, to try and think of it in a different way, to try and think of it in a positive way that it's a great teaching tool. And it's a great tool to be able to, to you know, you, so many of us work in studios on our own, you know, curtains closed, dark outside, everyone's gone to bed or we're in a studio somewhere, uh, no one else is around, you know, it, hours can go past. And having these AI programs give us the opportunity almost to have somebody sat in the studio with us and give us a very clinical version of how they think a source should be treated, be it EQ, be it compression, be it limiting. And I think that's amazing, you know, to, to be, to have been, I'm so blessed to have learned how to mix and master on analog equipment you, from using tape throughout the 80s and analog desks coming into the digital age. And now I'm at a point, you know, 30 plus years into doing this for a living where I have plugins which can guide me or second guess me, uh, show me what I'm doing wrong or show me where I've gone right because their guess was not as good as what I consider. Uh, my guess is, and just how blessed I am and how blessed we all are to be able to have these kind of plugins at our disposal. So there you have it, my favorite plugins of 2022, my favorite, not the best for you or the best for me or the best for anybody else, but they're just my personal favorites. Now I'm making a point of that because obviously through doing YouTube videos and being on a lot of forums, Everybody has their own opinion on what their favorite is or what the best is. And I always try my hardest when working with students or, or offering advice or opinions in forums that it's the best for you. You know, there is no best. Uh, it was something that my old man used to say to me, there is no best, there's only best for you. And you know, that, that's, that's something that I try and enforce, not enforce, I try and, say to people in forums, you know, yeah, it might be best for you, but it might not be necessarily best for everybody else. So they're my five favorite plugins. Uh, 2022 was a great year for me and I'm really looking forward to 2023. I know there's a whole bunch of great stuff coming up. I'm lucky enough to uh, beat a test for quite a few major companies and a lot of small independent companies as well. And I know there's a lot of really, really good stuff coming up. I just wanted to point out that um, a couple of the plugins that were in my review, my, my best of uh, 2022, were actually given to me by the companies. Uh, Plugin Alliance, SPLPQ, uh, I actually have a NFR license for, and Acoustical Audio's Ash as well, uh, and Waves BB Tube. But um, I stipulate with every company that I beat a test for or that I'll... Um, review uh, plugins for rather not beta test um, that my opinions are my own so they were not included in this list because they were given to me for free I get given I'm lucky enough to be given a lot of plugins so that would it would be ridiculous if I included every plugin that I got for free just because I got it for free but I just wanted to point that out because you may have noticed that I had an NFR license on some of them so but but like I said it hasn't swayed my opinion in any way whatsoever if I had to pick my favorite plugin of 2022, it would be Acoustic Audio's Ash. I can see myself using that f for a long time. And the, 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 the more that Acoustic Audio go down that route of, of emulating um, pieces of hard to get hardware, um, you know, pieces of hardware that most of us can't afford, and the better they get it, the more accurate they get it and the more accurate other companies are getting it, the better it is for all of us. You know, how lucky are we to live in a world now where with our music, we can, we have limitless plugins that do, I mean, it's just crazy to think even five years ago, if I'd have sat here and made a video like this to think what I'd be reviewing or looking at or saying was the best five years after that, you know, now 2022. So anyway, that's 2022 for me, my favorite plugins. Really look forward to what's going to happen in 2023. Stay, for every, stay safe, everybody. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more mixing and mastering tutorials and reviews. I look forward to seeing you all in 2023. 
My name's Conan. This is the Crates Motel. Until next time.